Hello, and I am absolutely delighted to be joined today by Susie Henriquez. I hope that's how you pronounce it, but I'm sure she's coming in just a second. It'll do, it'll do. Um, so Susie, who is also known as the CVB, is a CV writer with over 18 years of professional experience in people development, beginning her career with John Lewis. Very nice. I that would be a bad plan for me. I just spend too much. Um, she later joined the civil service in 2017 as a talent manager before establishing her own business in 2020. She's a level seven certified executive coach, chartered member of the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development and a fellow of the Chartered Management Institute and has the insight and experience to help people identify their strengths, build their confidence and demonstrate their value on that all important CV. So why on earth am I talking to somebody who writes CVs on a divorce podcast? Well, it seemed like a good plan as lots of people want to change jobs, go in a different direction, um, need to earn more money, etc etc so having some helpful handy tips as to how to get our cvs absolutely bob on seemed like a great idea so <laughs> where do we start so i guess um i guess to start with probably what what makes a good cv okay so um it's kind of a million dollar question in many ways it's quite interesting yeah. that we're you know, all the changes in the recruitment space in terms of, of kind of new technologies and new tools, the CV really still is very much kind of the gold standard, you know, in terms of presenting your professional experience, what you can contribute, the value you can add to an organisation. And the way I pro approach it is kind of what I describe as the five R's. So if you're okay for me to kind of go straight into that, because there's quite a bit into each of those areas, I'm That's really great. happy to kind of talk through um, sort of my, my approach to that, really. Um, and yeah. I could talk about this topic all day, by the way, so <laughs> you may have to sort of bring <laughs> me back, because um, I absolutely love what I do, and it's a real privilege to work with the clients I, I do support. Um, and I think the important thing to say about CV writing is kind of starting, the importance really of starting right at the beginning. So it's really tempting to just kind of maybe pull off a template online, just kind of keep adding your experience to a document that you've maybe sort of had in your possession that you've maybe dragged out every few years. And um, so you have this kind of you know, really lengthy um, kind of quite unwieldy document. And actually, particularly if you're at a stage of your life where you know, you're going through some change and transition, you're, you know, making some different steps, and you've got perhaps quite a clear focus about where you want to go. That's the time to really sit down and reflect, first of all. So before you've even kind of hit keyboard, got that pen and paper in hand, really just take some time to, to, to think about, you know, your strengths, your skills and capabilities, what you want as well, you know, what the goal is, because when you're writing your CV, you, you need to focus it towards where you want to go. And um, so that's a really important stage. And I think that's something that people often overlook in the eagerness to kind of, you know, get down to what font size should I use? How many pages should it be? How should it be structured? But actually, you know, taking that time to really reflect on your USP, the value that you add, um, you know, what you can uniquely bring to organisations um, is, is a really kind of key, key stage. So I would definitely, you know, really sit down and, and, and think about that. And part of that process might be having some conversations with colleagues and, you know, with friends to, to reflect on your experience, to draw out some of those kind of old pieces of feedback or maybe awards or kind of those professional highlights that you, you know, can think back on and, and draw some, some sort of key attributes from. So Can that I ask you a question yeah, yeah, while you're taking a yeah, breath? Yeah. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> Just because um, a lot of the people who are listening have gone through a massive life change. Yeah. And post-divorce, I often find that people's um, confidence is at a, an all-time low. And especially if they feel they're under pressure to get a job or to earn a certain amount of money, um, so that they can kind of maintain their lifestyle that they that they were used to before or, or to to maintain their kids lifestyle is is often another one and actually thinking about what you're good at mm. and think and kind of go it 
sort of shoulders back, head up, and this is who I am, and this is this is kind of what I'm great at is a really difficult thing to do. I like the idea that you suggested about talking to friends, but what what else might they be able to do? How else might they be able to kind of draw out that confidence on the page? Because that you know, putting yourself forward in a positive light is going to be massively important, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And in normal circumstances, what I'd be really recommending people do is to really you know write their CV ideally at a time and place where they where they do feel positive where they can reflect well on their experiences but yeah fully accepting that that's not always easy and I work with clients in a range of different positions it might be somebody that's looking you know simply for a career change and um, might be someone looking for a promotion it could be somebody who's in you know an, an unhappy place in a role you know it, divorce may be part of that experience and um, you know they may be in a redundant situation and that that's really tough so the, the journey of writing a cv in some ways can be quite emotional and it, it's as important as the end product in many respects and i would say that you know if you are someone that's finding it tough to kind of you know reflect on that positively and draw strength from from those um reflections then working with a professional cv writer might be a great thing to do because actually then you're not on your own you, you know if you're working with somebody like me you know I've got a background in coaching it's not just about the piece of paper we produce it's about the conversation we have the support and knowing that you've got somebody in your corner that's going to present you in the best possible light what we call in coaching unconditional positive regard you know full, fully respectful of the 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 client's position um, and you know certainly in my experience with the clients that I've worked with in the, you know many many different sort of roller coasters of emotion that we've been through and um, that's overwhelmingly kind of the the feedback that I get is that it's not just been about the product it's not just about the written document it's about the thinking the reflection and the support the, as I say the sort of championing from my point of view of that person's strengths and capabilities and asking the right questions you know um, and if you are working with a professional CV writer clearly obviously I would always recommend that because I think it's a really good investment to make in, in you and um, you know work with somebody that you know you feel you can connect with you can feel that you've got that chemistry with that's maybe got a background or experience that sort of you know resonates with yours you know have a conversation check out their credentials do all that due diligence um, and you know one of the key aspects of the way I work and that you know I think CBO writers should be taking this approach is to really you know have that consultation have that call have that conversation where you know I can ask those questions I can can reflect that back to the client and seeing yourself kind of captured on paper objectively by a professional in you know in the experience that my clients have is, is overwhelmingly positive and can make you it can be a real game changer so I think there are other techniques you know there might be sort of broader coaching that you can do there might be some um work on your strengths and sort of um you know there's different sort of tools and mechanisms out there that are available for you to sort of really think about what your strengths are reflective journaling and you know going back and drawing out sort of as I say key pieces of feedback maybe you know previous appraisals if you've been in work sort of you know um you know kind of g g gathering that 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 evidence, if you like, that sort of homework, so that you can start to translate that into a CV in a way that, you know, employers need to sort of see it and understand it. But I would say that sort of working with somebody, um, and I'm sure that, you know, I mean, that that's your role as well, um, Tamsin, I'm sure that, you know, for you, being able to sort of support and champion your clients through that process is a key part of sort of, um, you know, their, their confidence building. And it's exactly the same, I think, for CV writing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, it's all right. I can, say, in your I, can, flow. I, can, I can do this for hours. I, and, I, and it's a really relevant point because we were talking about where we just sort of starting, you know, starting in that 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 place and, and, and drawing on um, as much positivity and strength as you can because that will come through in your cv you know and what you need to be doing is showcasing the best professional version of yourself if you like and you do need to be able to you know sing your praises for want of a better expression and there's no place to do that like on a cv so i would definitely say in terms of starting to cons before you know before you even start to put the document together that's a really important place to start so that, that's kind of kind of what i like to 
uh, I guess, cover off <laughs> um, uh, before sort of thinking about the CV itself. So, yes, yeah, so, so assuming we've kind of done that, we're in that space, we've, we've you know, worked through those strengths, we've got a clear, clear goal as well so that we can kind of orientate that CV um, towards that goal, because it may be that someone's looking to make a, a career shift, you know, as you say, secure a promotion, you know, make a bit of a transition into a different sort of career. Um, you know, so you might write quite a different CV depending on those circumstances. So that's why it's really important to kind of have that focus. And then I mentioned the sort of five R's, which is the approach that I take when you're writing CV. So I can work through all of that, but do uh, do do chip in and interrupt me. I'm <laughs> kind of going off on one too, uh, too enthusiastically. <laughs> <laughs> so my five R's, there's kind of a group of three. So your CV, in terms of the document itself, needs to be recent, relevant and results focused. So in terms of your core kind of content, you need to make sure that it really is focusing on your, you know, most recent achievements, your accomplishments, the kind of real focus in, in the last sort of maybe five to 10 years, certainly in kind of drawing some of those achievements out, you know, you're really looking at making sure that that's, you know, you're not dining out on things that you did 20 years ago, you know, um, and, and particularly making sure that um, you, you know, you're using the sort of terminology and language that's up to date, that, that's that's modern, that's the reflective Reflective of, of current practice, you know, particularly perhaps if you're in a sort of technical field. So make sure it's really recently focused. That doesn't mean to say that you don't include your whole career history, but it may be that you drop some of those earlier roles, for example, into a nice sort of simple summary so that you can really focus the majority of the content on what's happened, as I say, in the last sort of five, 10, maybe up to 15 years. Can depend a bit, little bit on how many roles you've had in that time, but you want to make sure um, that it feels really timely. Yeah. Um, then it needs to be really relevant. So this is a really important part of writing a CV, particularly when you're looking to apply for roles. You need to make sure that what you're talking about and what you're presenting is relevant to the person reading the CV. And I know it sounds like a really odd thing to say, but you don't actually write your CV for you. You're writing it for the employer or the recruiter, or the ultimately the hiring manager. So you need to kind of think about what their needs are, what are they looking for, and how do you need to present your experience in a way that's meaningful to them? And there are loads of clues about how to do that, primarily through the job description, if you're applying for a role, you know, that's been, been advertised. Um, which is, you know, a pretty common route and, and a, a way you'd often use a CV. So, you know, make sure that you're mirroring the language of the job description, for example. You're not including things that aren't relevant, that you're focusing on what that employer needs. And sometimes the way I like to think about this is, do you remember those Venn diagrams you had at school? Oh, yeah. Science lessons? Oh, I like them. <laughs> two circles. I need to have some little props here for this, but I haven't. Um, you, you kind of there's one circle which is what the employer's looking for, what they need, and they've articulated that in the job description and um, you know through the person specification. And then there's you, your experience, and what you need to do is kind of make that those two circles cross over as much as possible, so that you're uh, mapping. Those yeah, you absolutely. Watching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You need to map your experience and skills into what they're looking for to make sure that it's relevant to them and to make sure they feel like you have absolutely wholeheartedly applied for this role. That's not to say you're not truthful, because I would never, ever recommend lying on a CV. Clearly, you've got to substantiate it all. But you need to express it in a way, as I say, that's meaningful to your audience. And that's where writing a CV is, is the, the trick of it is not to include everything. So it's not your autobiography. Ironically, given it's that <laughs> meaning, it's not the story of your entire life. It's what the employer needs to know about what you can bring to the organization, you know, based on, on what they're looking for and make them feel that you've really tailored that CV to that position. So that's the relevant bit. And that's kind of really, really key. So we've got recent, so even if got relevant. Sorry, I'm interrupting you again. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so even if you're wanting to go down a different route look at different types of roles than than you've had before actually that's not a major problem as long as you pull out of the roles that you've had before the things that are relevant if they call them transferable skills yeah I think. absolutely yes yeah so so that those sorts of things that are that you might have done before not not in the same role but that are relevant to to what you're going to do now yeah, is that yeah. pretty much right yeah absolutely so you know if you're in a really technical environment and you're wanting to continue that then you really would be looking to leverage those technical skills particularly where sure. they're specified you know if you're looking for a 
you know, a, a more senior position, a greater leadership role, really you'd be focusing then. Your language would need to shift so that you're really placing that emphasis, you know, on that leadership capability to really evidence where you have that potential and where you've demonstrated that either, you know, in a different, you know, in a different scope or, or whether you've sort of started to make those steps into that early leadership role. Um, so yeah, absolutely, transferable skills are key. And I've seen quite a lot of that really over the last couple of years, you know, from particular sectors that have been affected by the pandemic where clients and people are looking to shift that career and they're looking to really, you know, not overly emphasize perhaps the technical experience they've developed in, 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 in those professions, but the transferable skills that they have um, developed during that time. And that's what we, we really look to focus on, you know, so you're absolutely right. It's about transferable skills and, and you know, pivoting or transitioning your career is entirely possible. You've just got to present that in a way that, as I say, is meaningful and that you can demonstrate that you have real value to bring to that new organization or that new sector so yeah absolutely yeah. transferable skills are key and really important to draw out and again the job description you know the, the the language of the person specification will tell you what they're looking for so if it's communicating skills if it's influencing it's negotiation that's the sort of stuff you need to be drawing out you can't make it up of course you know and, and the more evidence-based your cv is the more clear outcomes are there are in there about how you've demonstrated that to what end the impacts that you've yeah had you know all the better which yeah, kind of brings no, us on actually right. to the to the results focused element so um you've got your kind of recent focus you know it's tailored and relevant to, to the role that you're looking for and then it needs to be results focused so you need to kind of bake into your cv as much evidence as you can about what you've delivered and the impact of that so it needs to have you know outcomes as far as possible and if they're numeric all the better because that looks great on the page your eye is sort of drawn to the numbers in an otherwise quite text-based document so it helps the reader navigate but it really clearly helps show you know how you add value where you contribute to organizational success so you know if you're talking about bringing new brands on board and developing business great but actually if you can talk about securing you know four new brand contracts worth hundred thousand pounds that's a much more um uh, kind of solid example a much more robust way to sort of position that and i think it's really easy to overlook that sometimes because people just kind of get on with the job don't they and, and kind of you know move from one project on to the next and, and that's where kind of going back to that time to of, of reflecting and drawing some of that out will really sort of pay dividends where you can really um pepper those if you like throughout the cv and really focus on the achievements and the outcomes that you've delivered so in terms of your kind of written content i would make you know that would be my advice make sure it's you know recent it's relevant to the role that you're applying for tailor it every time and then it's result focused you've got achievements you've got metrics you've got accomplishments really in there and then the final two areas i would say that make a great cv are that it's readable so you know visually it's oh a <laughs> and if you've done some recruitment you'll know the pain of, of of where you know you get i don't know four pages of kind of solid block text that's just oh your eyes just kind of smart don't they in response so um yeah so making sure it's readable so you know make sure it can breathe make sure you've got white space that you're using bullets a bit of light shading maybe some nice borders you know um or page breaks um you know bold or italics where where relevant you know just to make it easy for the for the very busy uh, hiring manager or recruiter that's probably got lots and lots of CVs to go through. You want yours to stand out. You want the eye to be drawn right through your CV. So just think about your audience. Think about how it feels when your CV lands on that person's desk. How are you going to attract and, and kind of maintain their attention and make it pleasurable for them to read through so that they get the kind of full, um, full picture that you're presenting in the CV. I generally don't um, use kind of um, sort of graphically designed CVs. Do they do tend to be fairly conservative, sort of professional, relatively you know pretty corporate, I suppose, sort of word based documents. Um, I think the the kind of more graphic designed um, options can work well in you know in those sorts of industries, creative industries, yeah. but sort of 
for those more corporate environments and um, tend to sort of stick to the to the nice traditional word document so yeah make sure it's presentable make sure it's it's easy on the eye as it as it were um, and then finally make sure your cv has reach so make sure that you're clear about your goal and that your cv will help you reach that goal and that kind of takes us almost back to that starting point you know make sure that it does capture you know you what you do who you are how you deliver that um, where you are wanting to go, what you want to achieve, that, that you know, the, 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 the kind of goal that you have that that CV needs to help you deliver. And I think that's a really important kind of point to, to almost start and finish on. So that would be the sort of five R's, I suppose, that I would use as a, as a sort of um, an approach to CV writing. I like those. I like that. That, that's all, that all makes complete sense. Um, and, and in conjunction with the CV, you have the covering letter yeah and in my reasonably limited experience of recruiting the covering letter is where everything falls apart <laughs> but the problem is that that's usually the first bit that's received and read by the recruiter or or the or the hiring manager so help can you give us and our listeners, some some help with writing covering letters. What should be in it? What shouldn't be in it? Yeah. So yeah, I think covering letters or you know personal statements or or in fact even as far as LinkedIn profiles, any of what I would describe as that kind of you know CV related toolkit, all of those kind of documents. Yeah, you need to think about that as a kind of almost as a, from a personal branding perspective, so that you've got, you know, a suite of documents that you've prepared that are consistent, that, you know, like all good personal branding, they're memorable, they're honest, visually appealing, uh, uh, kind of, you know, really do sort of, you know, g give a clear message about who you are and what you bring. So in terms of the covering letter, keep it to one page. First of all, nobody wants to read more than a one page cover letter. Don't make it too long either so you know again like we said with a cv break it up please please use paragraphs please use kind of bullets and um, bold to just draw the eye because somebody will be skimming over that so quickly you want their eye to be drawn to the kind of key areas the other really important point i think that you know i've touched on in terms of the cv writing but again make it relevant make it tailored write it for that organization try not to send a generic cover letter you know you you can have a sort of generic or you can have a sort of core structure so you know for example i would do a little couple of lines on who you are to introduce yourself you know what you do so you know how you you know what you do that delivers value what do you um impact do you make in organizations a little bit about how you do that and that's where you might talk about you know being highly collaborative being a great influencer being a really inclusive leader those kind of things and then you talk about why as well so it's really important that in that why you talk about your motivations for this job and nothing else so you need to make sure that you you know you're talking about being excited you're talking about you know something you know you're lifting something from that company's um mission statement or values or, or vision that shows that you understand and engaged in it and, and, and are talking for their language it's talking their language and i would also highlight in the cover letter kind of depending on what the brief is but i would as far as possible highlight how you meet their requirements so usually a job description will have a list of essential criteria or essential skills pick those out and tell them how you have demonstrated that because that's the best evidence they'll have about your suitability to do that in their organization and if you've got some evidence if you've got some metrics around that all the better and quite literally bullet point it so if they're looking for you know someone with excellent communication skills the ability to negotiate and i don't know technical procurement knowledge you know take those three points and bullet them in your cover letter and just give a brief kind of two line bullet point for each about you know some examples of where you've evidenced that make you making it easy for them so think about your audience make it easy um and and just yeah keep it keep it simple keep it focused um, and keep it personalized to that to that position i love that i think personalized is the one thing that 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 i think is really important because it says i want to work for your company not I want to work for anybody who'll take me <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and absolutely. we've you know we've had uh, and we have genuinely had people applying for jobs sending us a covering letter that says 
you know, are really interested in in working for your company um, because I think stockbroking is the way that I want to go. And we're like, yeah, well, that's lovely, but we don't do stockbroking. So, like, you clearly haven't read our website. You don't know who we are and, and you know, fallen at, at hurdle one. And they might have been an absolutely brilliant candidate, but they've not taken the time to research and when I say research, I'm talking, looking at our website and finding out who we are and what we do, yeah. because actually that's that's kind of base level. Please make sure that that you do that. Absolutely. And I think there's it's so much better to spend time on five really good applications than what I would describe as the spray and pray approach and just fire out your CV to 25 different organizations and hope for the best. Cause, cause you know, a hiring manager and you've just described that you absolutely know when a CV and a covering letter lands on your desk when somebody's done that. Um, so it's really, really important that you, you absolutely do that. You want to make that hiring manager feel like theirs is the only organization you want to work for. You know, it, it might not be, of course, tactically, you'll be applying to, to, to a number of different roles, yeah. but you want to make somebody feel like that. And the irony is that that's you evidencing, you know, your, your ability to communicate and influence really effectively. So, you know, yeah. as they say, the medium is the message. So if you're, if you're describing the fact that you've got great communication skills, make sure you're really showing that in your CV <laughs> or covering letter by the way in which you are communicating your suitability and your experience. Um, I think the other thing about cover letters as well or covering letters as well is that it can be very tempting to talk about what you want. You kind of need to make sure the focus is on what you can bring to that organization. You can yeah. talk about your passions and your motivations, but make sure you're talking about the value that you will add to that organization. Because um, sometimes I see a bit of that as well, sort of a lot of what I want kind of objective statements. It needs to be about, you know, just positioning that to a kind of this is, you know, this is all the great stuff about me and this is how it can add value to you as an organization ultimately to your bottom yeah. line <laughs> yeah no absolutely that's a really good point um kind of on the subject of of kind of things in your cv and cover letter that that you've got to um, demonstrate what you're saying if you say i've got really good attention to detail make sure everything's spelt right yeah and make sure your grammar's right because yeah. again, these are massive bugbears in my uh, in my book, and they're things that I see all the time, sort yeah. of grammatical errors, spelling errors. And I've had a couple um, of recruiters send me CVs. We we've um, recently hired the most amazing new assistant, um, and we're absolutely delighted with her. She's brilliant. Um, but when we were receiving CVs, I'd get them in from recruiters, and I would say. Can I just be clear, Did was this the CV that you actually received in from the person who yeah. you're applying for or have you retyped it? Because I want to know that if I found spelling and grammar mistakes, I want to make sure that they should be attributed to the person yeah. whose name's at the top or yeah. whether there's actually a possibility that the recruiters kind of typed it onwards and that it might be their yeah. mistake rather yeah. than the original person's mistake yeah and it's it's such a shame isn't it to miss out on an opportunity because of like a, you know a typo basically and you know a few yeah. tips on that if you haven't uh, ever used it use the uh, read aloud function in word yes. in the review menu it's this funny sort of slightly stilted american voice i'm very <laughs> very fond of it now it's it's my best mate <laughs> i use it all the time because sometimes when you read something your brain it knows what it's meant to say so it over yeah. compensates for it whereas if you need to read aloud you realize how it's going to sound to somebody reading it for the first time and you sort of think oh no that expression's not quite right or that's definitely a typo so use that if you're doing online application yeah. forms get grammarly um on your chrome um you know as an extension because that will pick up grammar and spelling you know in um you know uh, online applications you know and it's really basic but you know check it check it again i find reading your cv or your covering letter and it sounds odd from the bottom of the That's document right. to the top quite effective because again you're having to read it properly rather than your brain sort of skipping what it thinks should be there also just something as simple as leave it for a couple of days forget what it says and come back to it get someone else to check it over for you. And the other thing I find quite helpful, oddly, is if I save a Word document as a PDF, for some reason, when it's in a PDF, I spot 
certainly sort of more visual um, issues, you know, maybe if I've got not got something aligned properly or there's a slightly different font size, I'm much more likely to see that in PDF for some reason. So that's kind of some of the techniques I use because, yeah, it would be such a shame to miss out on a, on a great opportunity because of a, a typo. Um, yeah, yeah, but I think we all assume that, you know, if your CV's not absolutely perfect, what's going to happen in the kind of day-to-day -day tasks when we're working at speed and that that's that's sort of my my assumption with that with yeah. rightly or wrongly so um I, I have another question so um LinkedIn yeah has the capacity to click a button well I don't know if it does now but it used to so you can click a button and essentially it generates yeah. self-generates the CV um my LinkedIn profile is mostly i best go and check it after this now <laughs> to make sure it is but it tends to be the most up-to-date record of where i've worked and what and the stuff that i've done and the stuff that i'm doing yeah so why should i not just click the button in linkedin and generate a cv from linkedin yeah so a couple of things one you know i suppose it's making sure first of all that your linkedin profile really is showcasing demonstrating evidencing your skills strengths and achievements for a lot of people it not, might not be so you know have you got a really well written headline have you got a really well written about profile are your skills up to date have you written something in all of your experiences to talk about what you delivered in that role is your education up to date you know have you got all your sort of memberships and training on there so that'd be the first thing and if it is brilliant and yeah. um, i think the sort of instant click here button the risk with that is that you're not tailoring your CV or your application in the way that we've just talked about. So I think it's it's the sort of easy equivalent of the spray and pray approach because all you have to do is click that button. And I think it, you know, I think it's really easy to do, but I think there are sort of some downsides to it. I think the functionality is great, but I think that you're missing the opportunity then to really sort of tailor your CV. And I think it's thinking about your LinkedIn profile and your CV as, as sort of complementary to each other. So a lot of the time I include somebody's LinkedIn profile, you know, link, a hyperlink in a CV, because you want the recruiter or the hiring manager to, to go and have a look, assuming that the, the LinkedIn profile is nicely up to date and is looking great, you know, nice, friendly, photograph on there you know some good good posting good contents and all, all all the rest of it um so i think they absolutely can and do work hand in hand if you you know if you do so kind of judiciously and wisely and with that kind of personal brand perspective on it um because i think what you want to avoid particularly if you are you know in a challenging place um is, is kind of firing out your cv pressing quick quick apply you know again and again and again and just not hearing back because then you'll get into this kind of terribly sort of you know vicious cycle of sort of you know losing confidence and then you sort of it's harder to come back to that and that's why i say you know making you know some, some choices about what roles to apply for and really focusing your time and attention on tailoring your application very carefully as well as potentially doing some kind of you know, networking, you know, building your relationships, reaching out, all of those things that you hear about the kind of hidden job market. It's not so much that it's hidden. It's just about, you know, creating opportunity, um, you know, where, you know, in a sort of proactive rather than a reactive way sometimes. And I think you can do both. You know, your job search strategy should be about kind of almost all of that, really, um, you know, in balance with each other. Yeah, and no, I think that I think that's excellent advice. And I guess um, sort of quite dull questions to ask you, but but in kind of important, you know, we're we're at a point where we've where we've kind of know what what we're saying in our CV. We've we've tailored it all um, beautifully. Is there a optimum length? How should we lay it out? I've heard, you know, you hear what well, you should have. I don't know, a photo at the top, you shouldn't have your date of birth, you should have your address and phone number, you shouldn't have your address and phone number. Like, it, there's a lot of conflicting yeah. information out there. What, what's, what should we be listening to? <laughs> right there's lots of advice lots of theories lots of guidance lots of people in this space so it is quite busy so you're right sometimes it can feel a bit overwhelming i suppose the truth is that in some respects there's no one way to write a cv so how i approach it works for my clients and that's sort of based on my experiences and, and my professional knowledge in in sort of people development particularly recruitment uh, and so on 
you know, what, what I think works is, um, you know, clear, uh, logical, sensible headings. So professional experience, education and qualifications, for example, I, I would avoid sort of any of those quirky gimmicky things like, you know, I don't know, describing sort of writing a section that says, this is what I do, or this is what I've done, you know, it needs to be sort of fairly sort of standard. Don't include a photo, you definitely don't need that in the UK market. It's just a little bit cheesy <laughs> I can't offer a more sophisticated explanation there you don't need a photo <laughs> sometimes people say well somebody will click on LinkedIn and see me anyway well yeah you can't stop that but you know through a CV most companies will have quite rigorous screening processes in place and you, you, you're wanting to avoid anything that can leave anybody open to discrimination so no photo no date of birth no address full address you just put your, your location so Manchester is, is sufficient um, or wherever you might be some people just sort of writing things like Manchester or hybrid, Manchester hybrid or working from home, for example, just to give the recruiter a hiring manager an idea of, of sort of where you're based. So yes, you don't need um, date of birth. You don't need, you know, I've seen marital status and then sort of names and ages of people's children on a CV. You don't need any of that. That's definitely in the not relevant um, sort of category. Um, so yeah, keep it simple. I use a nice um, kind of uh, profile at the top, maybe six or seven lines, 100 words maximum, just to outline who you are. You know, again, that's where you'd be wanted to work in some key credentials in there so if you're in a, looking for a technical role that qu requires a technical qualification you know you put in there that you're a you know a lean practitioner for example that you've worked in I don't know three or four different sectors name those sectors or that you've got particular experience in you know a particular discipline and um, so nice little profile at the top which you don't need to write profile for by the way you don't need to also write CV at the top <laughs> of the CV it just takes up space and you, you don't need it it's pretty obvious what it is so nice Nice profile. Then I use a skills section to just really detail those, um, you know, particular specific hard skills. You know, so so that real those kind of real key areas of knowledge that you'll be looking to bring to the role. Again, really easy to tailor that. So make sure you do tailor that because it's a nice section. You can really adapt that quite easily. I tend to include some key achievements or highlights as well in one space. That you know, the top third um, of the first page is really key, and usually the kind of very end of the CV is kind of where these people look first and then kind of glance over the stuff in the middle. Um, and then, you know, nice, you know, reverse chronological professional experience working from your current role backwards, maybe six, five, six bullet points for each role. Again, really evidencing what you've delivered. So start each of those with a really nice past tense power verb. So something like delivered, led, managed, coordinated, you know, organized, um, designed, developed, directed, whatever. Those sorts of really nice punchy words that show them what you have you know, delivered and that you, you know you can you can tag an outcome to that as well and then you to work through that and then you've got your education and qualifications the sort of end of the, of the cv can you be a bit variable so this will look quite different for for clients for me depending on sort of what what they've got in there um i would avoid things like um interests like gardening baking and socializing <laughs> Don't put that on your CV because we all like to do stuff or variations really? of that in, in your uh, spare time, depending on what your, your guilty pleasures may be. But, you know, if you do stuff that's professionally relevant, you know, if you blog in your spare time, if you're a Samaritans listener on a voluntary basis, if you're, you're a school governor, um, if you coach a football team, anything like that, you know, that adds colour, it adds interest, it gives an insight into your passions and it's got you know, some really relevant skills. And you can maybe just drop a little one liner in there to draw out the skills that, that you sort of demonstrate. Um, then sometimes that can be a bit of a talking point um, you know make sure you include your relevant education and, and um, sort of certifications if for example you've got a degree you really don't need to put your A-levels GCSEs and goodness me I don't want to see any O-levels on a CV that's going <laughs> far too far back in time um, so just make sure that you put your kind of most advanced level of qualification and certifications that are relevant to the roles so if you're applying for a role as a I don't know process improvement practitioner but you've I don't know done something kind of quirky and slightly interesting on the outside for like for personal enjoyment like I don't know you have a certificate in pastry making or something like that <laughs> I would suggest that that is not the place to put that because it's just not relevant and, and it's you know it just it, it doesn't sit well um, on an otherwise very focused CV so sure if that come, comes up in conversation in the interview you've absolutely got opportunity to talk about that but you having a pastry qualification is not going to make or break whether you make the sift and the cut for a process improvement manager role so just leave it out um, and keep it really focused on, on what what you're doing um, and what you're applying for 
And so, yeah, yeah, sorry, you asked the million dollar question, didn't you? The length of a CV. Yeah. I would say the optimum length for most people is going to be two pages. Now, that is not definitive. Nobody's going to, you know, you're not going to get null points if you kind of go on to two and a half or three, particularly if you're in a more senior role or again, you're in a role where, you know, I've worked with clients that have got all sorts of kind of um, make, you know, publications um, kind of almost like a, a media appearances, that kind of thing, you know, that, that can sort of warrant a bit of extra space. So it really does depend. If you're a very recent graduate, do you know what? One page is probably enough. Don't make it fill two pages if it doesn't need to. But equally, if it's on more than two pages just really challenge yourself have you written your entire life story from that you know the day you started work at, you know age 16 or, or or you know have you really focused it around those kind of you know five to ten year achievements with your nice neat list of kind of early career summary so yeah I would say two pages is, is the optimum but I, you know there's a case you know always a case uh, you know for, for a little bit more a little bit less fair enough I'll um, remove my time <laughs> bartending at the Peacock Hotel <laughs> when I was 15 from my CV. Yeah, I've got to go, sorry. <laughs> and my uh, pink cookery certificate that I got when I was working for that. <laughs> Your five metre swimming badges as well, I'm sorry. No, I need to go. take those off. <laughs> very disappointing <laughs> but you know if you don't know you don't know and I think that's the case with so many people is that you know CV is it's, it tends to be something that people sort of trundle out maybe when they change jobs every few years and what do you do you just kind of add to it and add to it and add to it yeah, you true. know and I would say that if you're struggling with that think about how you can build in kind of reviewing and refreshing your CV perhaps every six months or so perhaps in line with your maybe your performance reviews in work you know where you're sort of capturing your achievements aren't you usually and talking those through with your with your boss your line manager or your colleagues you know take the opportunity at that stage to then to build that into your cv because actually the things that most clients the thing that most clients find hardest sometimes is going back and sort of digging those out of history particularly if you've moved on from that organization and they always promise faithfully to keep a log of you know achievements and accomplishments that you know quickly get forgotten when you move on to the next project so if anything you know try and build in that discipline because it makes you feel good about yourself and it makes you feel positive about what you've achieved and clear about what you can contribute so just think about trying to build it into a routine rather than it being something that yeah gets dug out of a dusty drawer um you know, every <laughs> few years or so and just simply added to and it gets a bit unwieldy I love that I, I there's such brilliant advice and um and I think you were absolutely right. I think we could talk about this. Yes. <laughs> we, could, we could talk about this all day. There's just so much to it, but I know that your advice will be so valuable to so many people who are in this position who are wanting to wanting to move forward and, and get a new job or get a promotion or do something completely different um with their lives post divorce so massively appreciate that yeah. um for any of our listeners who would like to get hold of you after this and get you to help them because that seems like a particularly good idea after all the things that we could get wrong about this how can our listeners get hold of you yeah so um i'm on linkedin that's probably the easiest place to get hold of me susie henriquez uh, or the cvb i do have a company page on there but find me on my personal account that's absolutely fine send me a message follow me or connect with me on there i've also got a website the cvb.co.uk so if you go to the contact page on there you can ping me a message through um, and i'll come back to you and just reflecting actually on what you just said there you know a CV can be so life-changing just as you were talking there about yeah. people that have you know maybe come through some really challenging experiences you know it, it can be the difference can't it, it can be a real yeah. game changer so yeah so spending that time and that investment on it I think is, is I mean I would say it of course but is always worthwhile um so yeah thank I you. think you're absolutely right and if you if you can put together a fantastic CV and get you know secure your dream job or put yourself in a position where you know money's not the issue that you thought it was going to be or you can make your life just that little bit easier then the time and and the investment is absolutely worth it so Definitely. um Susie's links will be in the show notes so feel free to click on those and uh, and link up with her that way and thank you very much for joining me it's thank been you. fantastic yeah, thanks for having me. And I hope, hope I've not talked too much about my favourite topic. <laughs> not at all. It was brilliant. Some really good tips there. Thank you.
Brilliant. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day.